So we've defined a special relativistic version of momentum, the form momentum, and we've looked at some of the properties of the form momentum. And in the last video, we showed that um, if momentum is conserved in one frame, it's conserved in all other frames as well. And what that means is, is that the law of conservation of momentum is the same in all inertial reference frames. It holds in all inertial reference frames, satisfying the principle of relativity. All right, so great. Form momentum is in really good shape with special relativity, but what is the form momentum? So we're going to start thinking about that, and we're going to focus in this video on the time component, the time aspect of form momentum. So that's given by this formula, um, which we arrived at by um, doing dt over d tau, with an m there. So let's, let's focus on on this formula. So here's this formula again, and I'm going to write this in a slightly different way using the laws of exponents. 1 minus v squared to the minus half. And in that form, um, it almost begs us to use the binomial approximation. So in the limit where v is small, I can use a binomial approximation for this, and we've done this before. So this is m, and this is going to be 1, and there's a minus here and a minus there. Two minuses, that's going to make it a plus. So this is going to be 1 plus um, 1 half v squared, or m plus half mv squared, and as a reminder, this is true only if v is much less than 1. So this term may look familiar to some of you. If you've taken um, an introductory physics class, you may recognize that this is the formula for non-relativistic kinetic energy, the energy associated with an object moving at speed v with mass m. And there's this other term here hanging out, but this sure enough is the non-relativistic kinetic energy. And so for that reason, we identify the time component of momentum as the energy of the object. And um, just a reminder that in classical physics, momentum is just x, y, z. There's no time component of momentum. So this was a sort of funny special relativistic thing that was going along for the ride, we weren't sure what it was. But um, this shows us that it makes sense to call this the, um, the energy. So let me write this. So PT, the time component of the form momentum, is the relativistic energy. Relativistic Relativistic energy. Abbreviated, appropriately enough, with the letter E. Okay, so this is the relativistic energy. Um, so, um, and maybe I should I should write this out. Um, well, let me say this. Okay, so this is uh, generally true. This is true only in the small v limit. So notice what's going on here. We've got this kinetic term, and then we've got this other term as well. And we're going to think about that term in a moment. But um, if, if we can't use this formula, and so all we've got is this before the binomial approximation, how would we get at the kinetic energy? What we would do is we're going to sort of use this as our guide and say the kinetic energy is this once we subtract m from it. So let me, let me write that. So there's this, over here there's this funny m term. If I subtract it, I have exactly the kinetic energy. So the, that motivates us to do the same thing. So this would be the total relativistic energy, the kinetic energy, that would be the energy associated with its motion, would be this. And let's see, that's going to have the form um, E, remember, is just this, which is this. 
m over 1 minus v squared minus m. So this is a form for the um, kinetic energy. And um, let me let's write this in one other way, which is sometimes useful. So that I'll do that here and write a little larger. Okay, so relativistic energy is given by this. Maybe I'll write that just one more time. And the relativistic kinetic energy is E minus M, we subtract off the M, which is this, or we can write it like this. And the reason I wrote it this way, I guess I could have written it that way also, but this makes it makes the following clear. Suppose the object is at rest, it's not moving. Then V is zero. Square root of one is one. One over one is one. One minus one is zero. And so the kinetic energy is zero. So that makes sense um, if the speed of the object is zero, it has no kinetic energy. Again, kinetic energy is the energy associated with motion. So um, this gives us um, some ways to think about uh, what PT is telling us. It's energy, it has this nice form, it's, and this is the kinetic energy. In a couple videos, there'll finally be a quiz and an example, and you'll get to use some of these formulas, and you'll see that they're not bad at all to plug into. Um, so we'll do that soon. Um, so, uh, and in the next video, though, we're going to look a little more deeply at this um, energy formula.